The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. Govaraxis, a wonder drug that gave people super regenerative abilities. It was meant to revolutionize the world. Limb loss was an issue of the past. Organ failure was fixed simply by removing the organ and just wait for Govaraxis to regenerate said organ. And most importantly, a hyperactive immune system that completely annihilated any form of illness, even cancer. And diabetes was no problem with it as well. Just use it twice per day, exactly every 12 hours for the effect to remain. That was what people were sold on. This is what people injected into their veins. And this is what had a catastrophic effect on humanity. Govraxis was tested, sure, but not on humans. And after three years of the drug being heavily used by almost everyone in the United States, South America and Asia, as Govraxis didn't yet fully pass through the bureaucracy of Europe, a symptom of the drug emerged. And it was quite devastating. Upon taking your first dosage, a person was forever changed at their very DNA which upon no longer being fed the drug, led to a phenomenon called brain rot, effectively turning the person into a zombie. To the dismay of many edgy teens and gaming weeaboos, however, this zombie outbreak was not only quickly quelled, but also quite boring. Sure, the living dead were brainless, hungering, actively rotting and hunting, kept alive only by their Govaraxis changed DNA, which prevented the body from fully breaking down, but it was quite easily controlled. It's safe to say Europe would never see Govaraxis be legalized. Zombies were either shot if the rot had advanced to the point of no return, or given a new dosage of the drug returning their mental faculties within minutes. And so humanity returned to normalcy just with the existence of a handful of quarantine zones all around the planet, which contained vast hordes of the shuffling dead. They spent their days going after wildlife, bugs and small animals to feast on, and never stepped over the ten-foot-tall concrete walls around their giant enclosures. However, each quarantine zone was unique, such as Zone 17, aka Hans die Totenkamm! Germany's only quarantine zone filled with the people who had gotten the drug on the black market. Or Zone 22, known to be the only quarantine zone with working electricity. Working electricity coming from a singular enigmatic building, the Fasper Entertainment Mega Pizzaplex. Of course, by now Fasper had rebuilt a new one outside the zone. They knew it was still operational and occasionally they sent armed security staff into it just to check if everything was still functional. After all, they were bound by a government contract. Zombie apocalypse be damned. But was the ruling from the judge? These people are still customers, you need to ensure their safety. <laughs> what a joke. And so, Fazbear Entertainment was forced to restock pizzas, fizzy fast and continue animatronic maintenance until the systems of the Plex broke down on their own so the place could legally be abandoned and no longer waste money. But what about the beloved mascots of the Pizza Plex? Well, they were having the time of their artificial lives. As to them, all the shambling dead were just partygoers for little Samantha's birthday party. And thanks to the internal service of the Pizzaplex having been shut off, the animatronics were unable to tell the time. To them, this was just an extra long day at the Plex, with nothing out of the ordinary. Among the Pizzaplex's permanent new residents was you, a zombie like all others. Guests. It had been about three weeks of your stay in the Pizzaplex, when your endless shambling had pushed you to the daycare. An Rube Goldberg-esque chain of events caused by a slippery floor. Let your rotten carcass breaking through the half-open daycare lobby gate, slapping into a cabinet, which caused said cabinet to close the entrance right behind you by falling. Of course, 
With your brain mostly gone, you were unable to fathom the time it took you to just randomly wander through the raw lobby until you finally, and obviously accidentally, shoved your body into the entrance slide, crashing face first into the ball pit of the daycare. It wasn't a graceful landing by all means, and if your body had been just slightly more rotten at that point, more than likely, you would have lost more than just a few teeth. Grunting, you had lifted yourself out of the ball pit, staring at the ceiling tongue hanging out of your mouth. With your arms stretched out, you then shambled towards the closest speaker which was still playing the happy daycare jingle. Like all zombies, you were attracted to sound. Lucky for you, it didn't take that long for you to be discovered by the daycare attendant. And as fate so willed it, it seemed as if a zombie was exactly what the twitchy machine wanted all along. An adult friend who didn't insult him. An adult friend who, with some persuasion, did what he told them. Like finger paint. Well, it wasn't really talking you into it. It was more you didn't resist when he grabbed your wrist, shoved a few fingers into the finger paint, and then dragged your hand over some papers. But since he wasn't alive, you didn't see him as a source of food, and so he was safe. You just ignored him. But it was Moon, the daycare attendant's other half, who found even more joy in your existence. Moon was the naptime enforcer. Whenever the daycare activated its naptime protocols, he would replace Sun's personality. Though he was considered too scary for toddlers and too childish for teenagers and adults. As such, he was kept dormant. But now, with the maintenance staff doing only the absolute minimum, the lights of the daycare shut off again during nap time, giving him life once more. And who was the one person he encountered whenever he awoke? You. Gently, he tucked you in whenever he awoke, read you bedtime stories, gossiped with you his pre-programmed gossip topics, and brushed your hair whenever he found you just sitting around after activation. But the moments he cherished the most with you was when night came. Technically, he was the only animatronic who could tell when night came. Especially in the state the Pizzaplex was in now. As it still had nightly blackouts. During which he took your hand and dragged you through the building, ignoring all the other shambling corpses wandering the darkened hallways. It was safe to say Moon loved you from the bottom of his mechanical heart. Tonight, he had taken you into Phaser Blast. The attraction was the least entered by the undead, as it was quite difficult for your kind to reach. It required an elevator ride. And the rang of a Phaser Blast Phaz uniform to enter. Zombies, of course, were unable to put on a new uniform, as the mental faculties to put on said uniform were no longer present. But Moon is an animatronic. He had access, and he could help you. Are you ready for this, Superstar? <laughs> ah, it's been weeks since I was at Feather Blast. Uh... I know! Ugh! You take the words out of my mouth, Superstar. But I'm sure you will enjoy it. The colors, the neon color decorations, yes! They're the only lights my sensors can accept without changing back. The robot looked up. And think often, these lights are no longer working either, eh? Otherwise this excursion would not have happened. <sighs> he nudged you. Though it is strange that by now, someone should have called a handyman to fix them. The elevator opened. Curiously, Moon poked his head out. To his knowledge, the blackout lasted for a full hour, but... What the animatronics didn't realize was, due to the rundown state of the Plex, this time had slowly increased over the months, and was now double the time it was usual. Moon dragged you into the neon color game heaven that was Feather Blast. 
Sadly, in your state you are unable to appreciate it. He stepped with you into the changing rooms, put on a feather blast vest, before looking at you expectantly. Uh, yeah, I can find any right size is difficult. Let's see, Superstar. The animatronic's fingers danced over the vests. An adult vest comes in three sizes, and you are a... He looked you up and down. You are still wearing the same clothes that you had turned into. A red tank top with jean shorts and flip-flops. Had been a really hot summer, after all. By now it was quite filthy and stank. Both your various corpse discharges as well as blood from animals you had gotten your hands on before wandering into the plex. An interesting thing about your undead biology was that any food wasn't excreted in the usual way. Once food was digested enough, you and your zombie brethren just vomited it out in a big yellowish glob that smelled quite nasty depending on the thing the zombie had eaten. Thankfully, robots didn't have noses. But maintenance staff bots removed them quite efficiently, so it wasn't that big of an issue. Well, I suppose new clothes in general would be recommendable. Have you even changed once since you started participating in little Samantha's birthday party? <coughs> Moon blinked. Yeah, I would feel gross too if I wore clothes for weeks straight. Moon snapped his fingers and quickly left you in the changing room as he had gotten an idea. Not that you were going anywhere. Your eyes were transfixed on a flashing advertisement screen. The flickering lights were just enough stimulation for what was left of your brain to experience something that a human might describe as entertainment, but if anything it was just a mere distraction. Minutes later, Moon returned to you, in his arms a female Fazerblast staff uniform. It was a grey sci-fi-esque military uniform shirt and a black skirt that just reached down to the wearer's knees. Combined with an adorable grey military beret with a glam rock Freddy pin on its middle. He put the clothes down before you and stepped back, tilting his head expectantly. Well, go on, Superstar. I'm sure this is okay with management. They haven't been complaining for a very long time. Minutes passed and Moon was getting impatient. Um... I am programmed to assist you in changing your clothes, Superstar. Would you like me to help you? Uh... You inhaled through your mouth, which caused your head to twitch. However, the animatronic saw it as you nodding in agreement. Uh, well, I mean, sure. I suppose uh, I have never undressed a lady before if... Uh, if you get uncomfortable, please tell me. If the robot could blush, he would, as he slowly began addressing you, neatly folding your disgusting clothes on the changing room bench. But as he pulled your tank tog off, you lost balance, falling forward straight into moon. Oh dear, Superstar! Huh? What are you doing? Your face was pushed into his chest. Uh. Your Zelvia bubbled against his outer shell. Moon's eyes became soft. Gently brushed through your hair. It was sticky, kinda moist. Few chunks of your scalp had fallen off over the weeks and they oozed foul blood. I, 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 I didn't think you liked me this much, Superstar. I. He gently tapped you on your back. But that already was enough for you to turn your head and regurgitate a chunk of pizza Sun had tried feeding you earlier. The glob sprayed on the ground, just barely missing the animatronic. Good afternoon, Superstar! Huh. Let it all out. I'm programmed in many burping techniques. If you ever need help, burping again. Okay? came your response. The robot looked at the mess with disgust and disdain, 
However, he was really glad you didn't hit him with it. Otherwise, he might have blown a fuse. Now, now, uh, let's get you changed, okay, before I uh, lose my marbles. He let go of you and raised your body up, your arms awkwardly outstretched. He averted his gaze. Oh dear, I can see everything. He was embarrassed at your nakedness. Moon didn't like to admit that he did enjoy it. You were a beautiful woman, after all. He positioned himself behind you, and as he shoved his shirt over your head, his mechanical fingers brushed over your chest. His internal motors began speeding up to a feeling quite hot all of a sudden. And the curious desire of wishing to fondle your body was making itself known to him, but he managed to put you into the Feather Blast outfit eventually. Controlling these strange urges that were mere a glitch that occurred because of the long time he had spent with you, <sighs> when you were alive, you actually always wanted to wear one of these. The workers looked so pretty in them. To add, you weren't in any state of appreciation. However, as Moon was admiring his work, he quickly realized your little accident from earlier was blocking the way into Fazer Blast's battlefield. Uh, why can't someone clean this up already? He then shook. He was about to lose his marbles. He could feel it. He gently patted your head to calm down. Ha, ha, ha. Sorry for shouting, Superstar, but I don't want to see this. Moon sighed in resignation. Uh, how about instead of playing, we wait for a staff bot to clean this up? We can enjoy the atmosphere somewhere else. Just follow me. I can show you a good place. The animatronic dragged you into the employee-only area of Phaser Blast. After up a flight of stairs, you two reached a catwalk, observing the entire attraction. I love it up here. The lights my body can accept are the most beautiful up here. Don't you agree? Quickly I sat down on a metal hanging bridge that hung over the central chamber of the attraction. You sat down more or less next to him after he pulled you down. Your lifeless body was pushed against the railing as Salvia slowly dripped down from your open mouth. Uh. The way you were pushing against it clogged up your lungs with bile whenever you inhaled. Meanwhile, Moon leaned back, pushed up by his arms, his feet dangling with excitement. I have never told anyone I actually like it here, Superstar. Mm, I suppose you could call it a big secret. Please don't tell it anyone. His head spun excitedly as he looked at you. And then he took your hand. As a gesture of appreciation. But as he held it up, his thumbs gently dragging over your soft gray flesh. Your joints gave up. And with a quiet pop, your arm fell back. Without your hand. The machine stared at your severed appendage. He couldn't comprehend it. His mind was racing with millions of calculations about the situation. Sure, he knew what severing an organ meant. Pain, screaming, blood, lawsuits. And sure, something was dripping from it. A thick, jelly-like, black-ish ooze that used to be your blood before you fell into the infection. But your lack of pain response didn't fit with the definition of the accident. At least not until his mind made a strange connection likely caused by a bug or a glitch. A superstar? I didn't know. Technically, animatronics aren't built for this. He leaned forward. If you promise to keep this from the staff, I accept your proposal. Are we married now? He then hugged you tightly. Oh, I love you, superstar. He looked into your milky eyes. Yellow pus came from your left, but he saw it as you crying tears of joy. And then he kissed you, 
when as much of a kiss as he was capable of with his static moon face. His plastic lips gently touched yours, which caused your zombie instincts to respond by trying to put his lips into your mouth. You're licking and slurping over his face hungrily, but your teeth were unable to bite into his plastic. Your tongue brushed over his animatronic teeth, leaving behind a thick layer of slime. Moon groaned, his hands gently rubbing over your bag. He purred, enjoying the togetherness with you. Placing a hand on your chest, he gently squeezed. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed this, Superstar, he hummed excitedly. As he bobbed back and forth, he felt your arms wrap around you. It was a purely instinctual move, like an animal holding onto a tree while dizzy. Your fingers dug into the ridges of his animatronic shell, causing his brain to fire sensitive neurons. This, combined with the romantic moment, filled Moon with a happiness he had never felt before. Oh, I love you too, superstar. <laughs> Just so you know, I'm trained in over 50 different styles of massages, three of which fit the definition of sensual. Would you like one of these? Uh... Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members. Especially my darling stewards. HuskyHD17, Bella Mare, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.